let's talk Wonder Woman 1984. This movie has sparked quite the debate online. If you cared about what critics say, it's currently sitting at a 5.6 out of 10 on IMDb, 60% on Rotten Tomato, and a 59% on Metacritic. Let's compare this to the first movie, 7.4 on IMDb, a 93% on Rotten Tomato, and a 60% on Metacritic. Apparently Metacritic just doesn't like anything. People are saying this movie is horrible, trash, sets DC movies back, which isn't really that hard to do. And just a not good movie at all. Reviewers like Chris Stuckman, Nerd Audic, and Angry Joe, and a lot of other movie reviewers here on YouTuber are saying the same thing. Well, unlike what you've heard on the internet from angry people in the comments and these critics, I'm here to tell you, no, this movie isn't bad. No, this movie isn't the worst thing ever. Is this movie perfect? Great? No, but it's a good film and here's why. First off, let's start with the feel of this movie. Right off the bat, this movie feels like if an 80s movie had the budget and the capability that we have today. The beginning of this movie when they were in the mall is so great and had me smiling. If you were going into this movie wanting a grand, hard-hitting, action-packed comic book movie, then this definitely is not for you. But if you're wanting a good comic book movie about greed, desire, and jealousy, and how you shouldn't bite off more than you can chew, mixed with a little bit of good heartfelt moments, then this is the movie for you. Ever since the first movie, Diana has been alone. Remember, we are in the 80s, so none of the big superheroes are around. She really is the OG superheroes in this universe. But she's clearly been sticking to herself and her job, not getting out much, and we can tell by her house that she clearly misses Steve, her first love. Now, we meet Barbara, who is the classic nerd trope from every movie, but I feel like it works for this and it doesn't make me want to roll my eyes because, like, it just works. Barbara just wants to belong and have friends, and she feels like Diana has that, thus her road to jealousy in this movie. We are then introduced to Maxwell Lord, a washed up oil tycoon that is broke and owes a lot of money since all of his wells are dried up. He has an obsession with the Dreamstone. We can see by all of his research in his office that he's literally obsessed. So we have our three main characters, Diana, Wonder Woman, Barbara, Cheetah, and Maxwell Lord. Diana wishes for Steve back. This is desire. Barbara wishes to be like Diana. Strong, sexy, cool, special. This is jealousy. All this will be shown later in the movie. Maxwell Lord takes it to a whole nother level and wishes to become the Dreamstone. This is his greed because now when people wish on him, he grants their wish, but also gets something in return. We are also introduced to Max's son who he loves, but he wants to prove to his son he isn't a loser. His son just wants him around. Remember the scene when Barbara makes a comment about Diana's shoes when they first meet? She likes that they are animal print, so the first heels that Barbara gets in are animal print. Over time in the movie, we see her wear more and more animal print, because this is what she perceives as cool from Diana. But she is slowly losing her temper and becoming more and more angry and more animal-like. And we just see changes in her personality. Remember, everything comes with a cost. Diana, on the other hand, wishes for Steve to come back. He does, but with a catch. His presence is in another man. To everyone, this is just some Joe Smo. But Diana sees past that and can see only Steve. Hence why we see Steve throughout the whole movie and not the Joe Smo dude. A lot of people think this is cheesy and ask why is she so obsessed with Steve? This would be the same if Diana was a male character. Oh wait, this has already happened. Captain America only liked one girl, which we saw from his first movie all the way until The Last Avengers. With Diana having Steve back, of course, like Barbara, it comes with a price. She slowly starts to lose her power, and we only see that once she gets into a fight, and 
she gets shot and she's not exactly bulletproof. Another complaint from critics was she isn't in her Wonder Woman outfit a lot of the movie. She's in it four times throughout the two hours and 20 minute duration of this film. I think it's just enough. What do you want her? To be in her outfit the whole entire movie? Even Bruce Wayne isn't in his outfit the whole movie. In Batman Begins, he isn't even in the Batman outfit until one hour in. At least Wonder Woman shows up in her outfit 15 minutes into this movie. The same amount of time we get to see Batman in his outfit in The Dark Knight. Let's talk about action scenes since people want to keep on bringing up this as well. This movie has four action scenes. Now, are they as epic as the first movie? No, but they all make sense for this movie. The first one was set during the war. So having big explosions facing an actual god himself, Ares, makes sense to have bigger than life action. But when you are in a city fighting low level criminals, it makes sense to not have over the top things going on. Even when she's fighting the armored cars, she is not at full power so you can't do all the crazy action she normally can. Lastly, the two fights are with Barbara. The first is in the White House and the second is when she's Cheetah. Both situations, Wonder Woman isn't trying to hurt Barbara or Cheetah. The last fight scene you can see with how defensive Wonder Woman is the whole time. Not doing hard hitting blows. The way that she beats her is just incapacitating her. Now yes, if I had one complaint about this scene is how drab and muddy this whole scene looked. They're trying to do the whole nighttime scene, but it just makes everything look washed out. And all the color throughout the whole movie just goes away during this scene. And it kind of is a bummer since when you see the armor and the advertisements and you know everything else, how colorful it is, I wish Cheetah popped out more color wise. And I wish the whole last scene was just more colorful. Really the only thing that's colorful in that scene is Wonder Woman's lasso. But other than that, I felt like the fight worked for what it was trying to do. So we got why everyone would wish for what they did and all the action scenes out of the way. Now let's talk about Wonder Woman stopping Maxwell. We see Maxwell slowly going mad with power the more people wish. When Wonder Woman finally finds him, she knows she just can't kill him because that's wrong and she doesn't do that. And the only other option is, well, she got to make him take his wish back. Just like she did when she had to say goodbye to Steve. Speaking of that scene, I felt like you could really see the hurt in her eyes. She finally gets the man she loves back and spending all this time with him. But to help save the world, she knows she has to let him go. Wonder Woman is able to wrap Max's leg up and project to the world her speech, telling people to take their wishes back to save everyone. Of course they do because the whole world is falling apart. Max slowly sees all the pain and suffering he has caused and doesn't want his son to die. Wonder Woman makes him see the errors in his ways and he finally takes his wish back. We see the whole world slowly fall back to normal, bombs disappearing, and everyone's wishes going away. This whole movie deals in more characters' actions than just punching stuff. This is the other side of Wonder Woman. This movie was a good sequel and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think people need to stop being blinded and be like sheep and following what others say and watch the movie for what it really is. I really think you'll get some good from it. This is why I give Wonder Woman 1984 an 8 out of 10. If you guys like my movie review rant thing, hit that thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.